What's up YouTube, Saf here on Super Saf TV and welcome to another Super Saf style camera comparison, this time between the iPhone 10 and the Google Pixel 2 XL. So as always, we'll be doing lots of tests, front facing camera, rear facing camera, images as well as video. Do also look out for the audio icon in the corner of the screen and that will indicate to you which device the audio is coming from as well. All of that just rolls off the tongue now. Anyway, so we're currently using the front facing cameras on both devices. Uh, we're just gonna be taking a bit of a walk right now to see what stabilization is like and let's change that into a run got the sun right there let me know what you think of the dynamic range extreme the full 360 as well now testing out the rear facing cameras we're filming at 4k 30 frames a second we do have two times optical zoom on the iPhone, so we can jump to that whenever needed. And let's take a walk, see what the stabilization is like on both devices. Make it a bit more challenging by turning that into a run. Now we're just taking a look at the autofocus on the iPhone 10 doing very well and now the same autofocus test on the pixel 2 XL let me know what you think That was the video now before we move on to images looking at what we're working with here the iphone has a 7 megapixel front facing camera with an f 2.2 aperture the pixel 2 xl has an 8 megapixel front facing camera with an f 2.4 aperture and for the rear cameras we have a single camera on the pixel 12.2 megapixels with an f 1.8 aperture optical as well as electronic image stabilization the iphone has a dual camera setup both 12 megapixels both optically stabilized one wide angle with an f 1.8 aperture and one telephoto with an f2.4 aperture which is going to give you two times optical zoom. Now all images in this video have been taken on automatic and this is to keep things as fair as possible. Now starting off with some selfies, the pixel is wider and that dynamic range is just magic. I don't know what Google are doing but the dynamic range from the front facing camera is absolutely insane. With the iPhone the highlights have been blown out in the background. This is something that I've consistently noticed on many iPhones. They do tend to favor the face overall in terms of exposure, but this can result in blowing out highlights in the background as well as on my forehead in this situation. Now, a few people complain that this is because I wear sunglasses. So in this shot, I haven't worn any sunglasses. And once again, the Pixel does have much better dynamic range. Now in this shot, the iPhone's actually not doing too bad for dynamic range. It has maintained those highlights in the background a little bit. But when comparing this to the Pixel, the Pixel is just doing so much better. We've still got some blue in the sky and the skin tones are so much more accurate compared to that of the iPhone. Now a new feature that both devices have is portrait mode from the front facing cameras. Both doing okay here, but I do prefer the Pixel overall. There are some little defects on the Pixel on the edges, but the iPhone has faded away my hair, a lot of the edges as well as my sunglasses. Now another shot using the portrait mode on the selfie camera. The iPhone is actually doing much better in terms of dynamic range compared to what it was doing previously but it has faded away a lot of my face here. It looks very soft. The edges of my sunglasses, my beard as well as my hair have been faded away whereas the Pixel is doing an absolutely awesome job around the edges and has maintained those edges much better compared to the iPhone. Yes, it's not perfect, but the portrait selfies that come out of the Pixel are absolutely epic and I think most people will agree. Now moving on to some selfies in low light. Here, the Pixel is brighter, but it's not as sharp and it's also got this green yellow tint, which I don't really like. Now using the front facing flash in this low light scenario, and here I think the Pixel is doing better. The colors are better, we've got less noise and it looks like a sharper image overall. The iPhone is doing much better than it was without the flash, but it is definitely quite noisy. Now an outdoor macro shot, both doing great here. We've got lots of detail, slight differences in color, but both great overall. An outdoor wide shot, and in terms of dynamic range, both of these are doing absolutely great. 
We've got a decent amount of detail in the highlights as well as in the shadows. Now, an advantage that you have on the iPhone is the two times optical zoom. So we can zoom in and still maintain a lot of that detail. We've only got digital zoom on the pixel. Now, another general shot uh, just to show some color differences, both actually doing really good, but we've got a slightly more vibrant colors on the pixel compared to the iPhone. And now to really test out the dynamic range, because these two are so good at dynamic range, it's hard to pick a winner. Once again, both are doing really, really good. Slightly more vibrant colors on the pixel, but the iPhone is pulling out more details in the shadows compared to the pixel. Now trying out another shot with very tricky dynamic range, both once again doing absolutely great here, but the iPhone again is pulling out more details in the shadows. So for dynamic range, I think I would have to give the slight edge to the iPhone overall. Now let's move on to some shots using the portrait mode where it's gonna blur the background. Now first up to match these images, you actually have to move a little bit closer with the pixel. And that is because it doesn't have a telephoto lens. Now the colors and dynamic range are better here on the pixel. You can see that we've lost a lot of detail on the iPhone in the background, but the iPhone is doing a much better job in terms of those edges. You can see that my ears have kind of faded away on the Pixel. I do think this is because of the dual camera setup on the iPhone. It's better sensing depth compared to that on the Pixel. Another portrait image, once again, dynamic range better on the Pixel, but edges better on the iPhone. Now, final image in portrait mode. This is under direct sunlight. Uh, both are actually doing really good here in terms of dynamic range. The colors actually seem a little bit more vibrant here on the iPhone this time. I think this is gonna come down to personal preference. Both of these are struggling a little bit on my ear in this situation, but I do think the iPhone is doing a little bit better here. Now let's move on to low light shots. So this is low light outdoors. I think both are doing a really good job, but the pixel is brighter. You can see much more of that building in the background and the pixel on the iPhone. This has kind of disappeared away. Another low light shot. And once again, I do think the pixel is doing better. It's maintained the colors much more compared to the iPhone and also that detail is there. A final shot in low light and I do think both are doing very well here. Slightly more punchier colors on the Pixel compared to the iPhone but quite similar in terms of sharpness and detail. So there we have it guys, the super soft style camera comparison between the iPhone 10 and the Google Pixel 2 XL. Both performing very, very well overall. Now when it came to front facing camera images, for me personally, the Pixel 2 XL has the best selfie camera out there. It was wider with much better dynamic range compared to the iPhone. And with the portrait mode, it did a better job overall for those edges as well. Now, this is quite a new feature on the iPhone for the front facing camera. So hopefully it will improve with some software updates. Now, when it came to front facing camera video, I once again do think that the Pixel 2 XL was better overall. You did have better dynamic range overall on the Pixel, whereas once again, the iPhone tends to blow out those highlights. Now, when it came to outdoor images, I would say that the iPhone has the edge. It has the two times optical zoom advantage, so you can get in closer to your subjects. And although dynamic range was very, very close, it looks like the iPhone just does seem to pull out the details and the shadows a little bit better compared to the Pixel. Now for video from the refacing camera, I think quality wise, both were really good. The Pixel has some sort of magic stabilization. The combination of optical as well as electronic image stabilization does work really well on the Pixel. But with the iPhone, you have 4K at 60 frames a second. This is something that I couldn't really demonstrate in this video. And you also have slow motion at 1080p on the iPhone compared to 720p on the Pixel 2 XL. Now I had left both on autofocus and it seems that the Pixel maybe had focused in better on the slow motion test, but because of the resolution, generally overall, I do think that the iPhone performs better in slow motion. Now for the portrait mode from the refacing cameras, the Pixel 2 XL did have better dynamic range overall, but the iPhone 10 did a better job of blurring the background because of the dual cameras, it seems to better sense depth. The iPhone also has a studio lighting feature which is gonna let you toggle between some different lighting modes after the fact. Now when it came to low light, I would have to give the overall win to the Pixel 2 XL. Images were brighter overall with less noise and better colors. Now when it came to audio, both of these still record in mono, the Pixel was louder, but it did sound a little bit tinny to my ears. I'll let you go back and have a listen and see what you think for yourselves. Once again, I do think both cameras are absolutely great and some of the best smartphone cameras out there. That's what I think anyway. What do you think? Definitely drop me a comment below and let me know. If you'd like to see more images from lots of different devices, then give me a follow on Instagram. I'm at SuperSaf TV. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then please do hit that thumbs up button for me. It really does help me out. And if you want to see more SuperSaf style comparisons, then be sure to subscribe and switch on notifications. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on SuperSaf TV, and I'll see you next time.